All right, here's the situation. I made this video earlier today, and then I went golfing. That's why I have hat hair, but I'm comfortable with you guys, so on we persist. Anyways, yeah, and I was really uncomfortable with the way I did it. I, usually I'm good at finding the little chunks, you know, of songs, three or four of them that you kind of put together like Legos, and you make, you construct the song out of it. But this song, Dyslexic Heart, by Paul Westerberg, it's just got just a little thing here and there that makes it so it almost doesn't repeat, not even once. It's just a whole thing that just goes. So, we were taking Ruthie to Kung Fu class, and I spied a golf pencil in the car, and her, um, this is funny, and her Kung Fu <laughs> pamphlet, <laughs> and I, uh, I, I, I charted out the whole darn song waiting in the car there, Chord for chord, measure for measure, and you can find this chart on my website, myname.com, Ryan Lent, of course, and there's a tab that says show notes, and this song, of course, because we do a secret code, will not be called Dyslexic Heart, it will be called Elon Musk, because the opposite of heart is gallbladder, and Elon Musk most likely does not have a dyslexic gallbladder. Okay, here we go. Intro, F, but not big F, little F. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna start with your middle finger off, strum and hammer it back on. And then switch to C and do the same thing. The second time, it happens a half beat earlier, so your strum on the F with the hammer on is gonna be an up strum. And then the C this time is totally different. You're going to start with regular C and then take your middle finger off and then put it back on. So, so far, by the way, this song we're doing is because Kara et al. suggested that we should do uh, a single soundtrack playlist. So here we continue with that effort. I think this is song number three or four or five, but maybe in a few months we'll have the whole thing done. All right, great. So far we have... The third time is the same as the first time. And then we switch to G, but it's a different G. You're going to use your pinky on the third fret of the baby E string, and then your middle finger goes up to A2, and your ring finger grabs E3. That's a G just as much as this is a G. It's just, you know, if you played it with the open B string, it'd usually be like this. But here's why we're going to do it with these fingers. You go G, G. Pointer finger to B1, middle finger to G2, back to G. There we go. <laughs> so. And that's like, well, it's neat because what you're adding is a, is a 4, so it's like a sus 4 there, that C note, and a 2, additionally, that A note. So that's weird. It's like a sus 4 and a sus 2 at the same time. Here's our intro. That's how you do that. Great, now let's start going through the song. So, we do that three times. The third time, the na-na's start happening. You can kind of, if you're singing it, it's sort of hard to do the hammer on, so just play the regular chords, especially if you're sitting around a, comp, a, a campfire, or a campfire, or a coffee table. Campfire being the uh, combination of campfire and coffee table. The regular G there, that's cool. The fourth line of the intro is going to be F, C, F, C. Now, go to big F and here's why. We're going to play F sharp diminished next, which is a fancy way. Oh, big F, by the way. One, three, three, two. F sharp diminished, fancy way of saying that the, the bass note of the F moves up to F sharp. You end up with an F sharp chord with a flat fifth and a flat third, although we're not moving this root. You could be really fancy and do that too. So you got F, move that one up, move the pinky up. Doesn't sound like much by itself, but it's, or you could just not do that and really just emphasize that bass note. <laughs> Doesn't sound like much by itself, but it's the chord that slides from F to G. Here's the, see if I can do it the fancy way. 
great. We're into the verse. F, C. So hard to read. F, C. Same as an intro. Second line of the verse. F, C. F, C. D7. All the Ds in this song are 7. D7 is pointer finger, B string, 1st fret, G string, 2nd fret, baby E string, 2nd fret. Is this your name or a... And then I like G7. That's three, two, one. Uh, you could play G there if you want. Doctor's eye chart. Is this your name or a doctor's eye chart? The first chorus. F, F, G, A minor. And then we do nanas. F, C, F, C. And another little chorus part. F to offend you. A G, A minor. And now comes our second intro. F, C. It's just like the first intro. That G's a turnaround, you know, when you're all... It's the best way to describe a turnaround. Okay, second verse. Same as the, uh, well, almost. We'll get there. We'll see. Okay. Second verse starts the same. Thanks for the book. Now my table is ready. It's a library old box. Here's the thing. I still think it's G7. Tart. He sings a G. Tart. Tart. He sings that G. He sings a G, but here's the problem. The, ba the bass plays a high F, so the bass was all D, E, F. That's right. That's what the bass does. Um, you know, high relative. It's a bass, so it's still lower than anything we're playing. But... The bass could be playing that F because F is the note that makes G7, G7. I had like endless arguments in my head. You shouldn't even! No, you shouldn't even! About this. And uh, the other possibility is that it's just F. And he sings a G over the F. See if you like that with your ear. A half angel, half turn. Because that sort of sounds like we're going to land there for a second and then propel into the next part, which is what it does. I still like G7. Play F if you want. Yeah. I feel like the bass would have played low F if it was F, but since he played the high F, he was playing the dominant 7, which is the F note of the G7 chord. All right, that's the end of the second verse. A half angel, half turn. Chorus 2, F, G, A minor. before the bridge, and this is one of these things that it's different every time. There's no G turnaround in this, so it's just F, C, F, C, F, C, F, C. Before, do I read you correctly, which is, this part's really neat. D7, E minor, F, E minor, D7. Here's another time where the bass plays a high F, and I feel like it's a G7 part, because he sings the G, um, but the guitars are so low in the mix there that in no pair of headphones could I discern if it was playing G7 or F. I think it's G7, might be F, you pick. There's a question mark at those spots on this little chart here that you can decide for yourself. Yeah, so, do I read you correctly? You need me directly. Chorus 3, F, F, G, A minor, F, C, F, C, and now we're to, you keep swaying, G, what are you saying, that's F, think about staying, but you keep A minor, and you can do this signature move here, to F, same signature move. Let's go from the top of that. You keep swaying. What are you saying? Wee -wee. Think about staying. Here it comes. But you keep A minor. F. E7. G. And then we are to the big intro in the middle. So that's the 
the structure of which there's a lead guitar doing something there, um, but the structure of it is just an intro with the turnaround. So. Except it does the And then this is another reason because now are you staying um, which should be musically the same part as uh, are you swaying or you're you keep swaying right uh, but so this now bridge bridge B it's the second kind of bridge in this song instead of G F G it goes F G F uh, hints that Paul Westerberg is a very, very purposeful, meticulous, intelligent songwriter. So again, hats off to you, Mr. Westerberg. Anyways, are you still F G F? And then we do our A minor. F E or E7 could be either. Doesn't matter. G, turn around. I'm trying to comprehend you, but I got a dyslexic. To the next, do I read you? D7, E minor, F, E minor. Help me with this part. Yeah, so that time he unabashedly plays a big G. It's a regular G. The bass plays a G. It's not a G7. Do I read you directly? You need me directly. D7, big G. Do I date you? Do I hate you? Do I got a dyslexic? That was the chorus even yet again. F, C, F, C, F, C. And the outro is just F, C times 10 hundred million. And that is how you play Dyslexic Heart by Paul Westerberg. I think that was okay. I'm not going to redo that. Yeah, um, there was no really good representation of how to play that song anywhere. Um, so it has been an honor to show you how to play that song. And I hope that that was helpful. And I hope that you go get this because it's going to be impossible to remember otherwise. Like I said, it's just a big pile of chords. It's not like a neat little riff and then you do like four chords and then it's the neat little riff again. It's a giant pile and it's a little different every time. But yeah, so I'm going to stop talking now. And thank you for being here and I will see you next time with more stuff. Goodbye!